It's January 22nd, and we're reading from Matthew chapter 19. Today, we're introduced to the conflict and controversy that had been issued to Jesus pertaining to that of marriage. Now, understand that the uh, Pharisees were trying every approach and every maneuver to try to capture Jesus in, uh, in a trap. And so they would raise up issues that were controversial, that might uh, diminish some of his respect or uh, support from those around. So they come to him, not because they want to know a real answer here, but they come to him and with this issue and ask him in verse 3, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? Now understand that at that time, a man was the only one that could divorce, and a woman uh, really didn't have any power or position. So when uh, he's asked this question, can a man divorce his wife for any reason, then Jesus answers and he responds back to them and points them to the law of first mention. Now you'll find in the scripture that if you want to know something about a topic, that if you go back to the first time it's mentioned in the Bible, what we call the law of first mention, it reveals so much about God's original intent and design and uh, purpose for whatever that subject might be. So Jesus takes them back to the original design and says to them, you know, God created man and he created woman. And, and then he lays out that a man's to leave his, his uh, father and mother and the two of them are to come together, husband and wife. They're going to be one flesh. And, uh, and he says they're no longer two, but they're one flesh. And he says, what God has joined together, don't let anybody separate. So what, what he does, he, he's pointing his back to God's original ideal. This is what God's ideal. Now, we can point this with anything in our life. God's original de ideal as it pertains to child rearing or uh, health or, I mean, you can, and uh, finances, anything. You can look back. And, and we have to remember that just because Jesus went back and shows the ideal, we also have to recognize that in many of those areas of our lives where there's the ideal or God's original intent that, uh, you know, we get outside of that and then we reap the consequences for it. And, uh, and so they press, the religious leaders pushed Jesus a little bit more and said, then why did Jesus command uh, to give a certificate of divorce? and to put her away. So now they're just going to put a little more pressure on, get Jesus to, because now they're raising up Moses, you know, that figure of respect or authority, and they're trying to contrast Jesus and uh, that of the uh, deliverer or the great leader Moses. And he said that Moses did that because what? He points it right back at him, because of the hardness of your hearts. That's why he did that, because your hearts were hard, and he permitted the divorce, <clears throat> wasn't God's design, because he says from the beginning it was not so. But he said because of hardness of heart, uh, this uh, got outside of the original design of God. And so here's something that Jesus says. It's tough. He says, uh, whoever divorces wife except for sexual immorality, marries another, commits adultery, and whoever marries her who's divorced commits adultery. So Jesus is really revealing the seriousness of our decisions, especially as it pertains to marriage. And he gives this exception clause. And, um, and I want to simply say to you that many times people will take one verse and then they will, they will bring down a, a very narrow uh, application of it. We believe that marriage is sacred. It's divine. It's very. Uh, it's an institution that God created. He designed it for permanence. But we also understand that even though that's the original design, that all of us are subject to failure, sin, rebellion, hardness of heart, and um, and we contribute then to the breakdown of God's original design. And so I ask the question. Let's say that this is true. Uh, I mean, and it is true. But let's uh, let me simply suggest to you. To ask this question because sometimes we treat this one regard as an exception that is that every other sin in the world can be forgiven adultery can be forgiven um, child abuse can be forgiven uh, somebody that's committed horrible crimes will say they can be forgiven but sometimes I feel as though when we get to this subject right here we treat it as the unforgivable sin that once you cross this line if you ever fail in this area there is no room for grace and there's no room for forgiveness. I'm convinced and believe 
that as it applies to every other sin in the Bible, in our lives, that when one is truly sorrowful and remorseful, that they miss the mark, that they fell short of original, God's original design. And when we come in that heart of repentance and brokenness and we, and we invite the Lord Jesus Christ, and we say all things are made new, we believe that, that, that through Christ, all things are, the old is passed away and everything's made new. I don't think there's an exception for that. I, I think that God's design is if we really believe that, that he can make in us a whole new heart, a whole new life, and he can cast those sins as far as the east is from the west. It was a serious response, serious enough that when Jesus said it, his disciples were astonished. That's what it says in, in verse 10. And it said, why well, you shouldn't even marry. I just want you to know that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when, and again, I say this, that when we don't try to justify, excuse, and all the other things about our sins, but when we humbly come to God and say, God, I, I really messed up, that God is able to forgive. And you don't have to live as a second-class citizen. Jesus, uh, in verse uh, 13, blesses the children. I love this part about Jesus because he wants the kids to come unto him. The, the, the disciples are almost trying to get the kids away, but it does demonstrate the incredible value that Jesus placed upon children and how you and I ought to treat. Now, I don't think it's just young kids because, oh my goodness, how we have the potential of framing and shaping and, and, and um, inspiring them and, and uh, being a mentor to them. But I think it also applies not just in the physical, but in the spiritual sense. That you and I have young men and women of God, or oh, they may be older in age, but I'm talking about young in the faith, that we ought to treat as children of the faith and the value that, that the Lord has placed upon them. And we begin to pour our life into them. Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus counsels a rich young ruler, and this one has always been one that I find interesting. This rich ruler, power, position, money, comes up to Jesus, said, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal lives? It's a question that many people, what do I need to do to get to heaven? What, as if there's some way you earn it, if there's some way, something you can do, some, and, and he was used to buying anything. He was used to his a position to be able to get whatever we want in life. So he says, okay, what, what do I need to do in order to know that I'm going to live forever? And Jesus points him to the commandments, keep the commandments. Now he's, he's, kind, he's not saying, hey, if you keep the commandments, you go to heaven. What he's doing is trying to help the man discover something. And so, uh, and, and the rich man said, well, which one? And, and Jesus, interestingly enough, identifies only some of the commandments. You know which ones he identifies? He identifies the commandments that are horizontal. That is the relationship we have one with another. So he deals with those, those uh, issues of life, you know, committing adultery and stealing and, and um, not honoring father and mother. That's how we treat other people. But he, he, he left it at that. And the young man said, man, I've done all of that. All these things I've done from when I was just a kid. Okay, so what else do I like? Well, then Jesus is going to point it out because there are some of the commandments he wasn't keeping. And he said, if you want to be perfect, go sell all that you have, give to the poor and come follow me. Well, when the men, young man heard that, the Bible says that he went away, verse 22, he went away sorrowful for what he had great possession. So what happens here is that um, Jesus identifies the commandment he was violating, and that is, he, you shall have no other gods before me. And he had a graven image. I mean, he, money was his God, and power was his God. Position was his, his God. And, um, and Jesus, the Spirit of God has a way of just really bringing this out, doesn't it, in our lives? I mean, he's just the way that it, it all came about. And um, he was sad, and he, gave, and he walked away. And remember something, Jesus didn't go chasing after him. Why? Because he already exposed his heart. He already made a decision. He already pledged his allegiance to his God. And he wasn't going to dethrone that God from his life. And Jesus knew that there wasn't anything more that he could do. You and I have got to recognize that Jesus Christ is the only way that you and I are going to get to heaven. And, uh, and then this part concludes when uh, the disciples say, man, who then can be saved? It, it, it's, it, I, I, they were stunned by that, Be, you know, and, and you, it's not the wealth that gets anybody into trouble. It's, it's the God 
But Jesus does say it's hard. It's hard for a rich man to get into heaven. Why? Because things soon control and become gods in a person's life. And Jesus said, hey, with men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. May we remember that um, in this life, that uh, things that we, where we failed, and where we feel like we can't turn, change, can't get over a hump, something in our life. Could we just remember something that um, with, with God, all things are possible. Hey, I just pray you have a blessed day today. May the Spirit of God go with you and bring to your remembrance any of these things that we've talked about.